these cars was great to begin with, right? The double wishbone suspension, the chassis, the feel. Uh, this truly is a sports sedan. It's, it's definitely a driver's car. Welcome to Drive Culture. I'm Jonathan Rivers, and today we have the 2024 Acura TLX A-Spec. And I'm gonna tell you why this is an awesome sports sedan that you should consider. We're gonna go over the exterior, interior, powertrain, and of course, take it for a drive. So if this is content you're after or you're new to the channel, please be sure to click that bell to subscribe to come back for more. And with that, let's get after it. All right, guys, let's jump in and talk about the exterior of this TLX A-Spec. So this was a mid-cycle refresh. If you remember, this car launched a few years ago, and now they've updated the design, the technology, and features. So we're going to get into all of that. But let's first talk about the design. So right up front, you're going to notice that they changed the grill. Right, so Acura calls this the Diamond Pentagon Grill. And so for this 2024 TLX, they did a complete refresh. So what they did is it used to have this kind of bezel or frame that goes around it. Well, they eliminated that and they actually changed the way the diamonds in the pattern look. It, it actually looks a little bit better to me. I think it's a much cleaner design than when the second gen TLX launched. Also, the Acura caliper, the brand logo, if you guys remember what it used to look like, there used to be this kind of shield over it. And that was true for actually a lot of automakers because they were trying to use new radar technology at the time that needed that kind of shield to project the radar. Well, they have a new radar on this car and they were able to get rid of that plastic shield now. So the Acura logo looks a lot better too. So I think just that small change to the grill really makes this car look awesome now. Now, with it being A-spec, and this car particularly is in majestic black pearl, right? There's a lot of pearlescence in it. Um, you get some black accents. So you get these little accents down here that turn gloss black with A-spec. You get the LED fog lights down below. All the TLXs come with the signature, you know, daytime running lamp. They call it the Chicane DRL with the jewel eye headlights. So again, Outside of the grill, there weren't a lot of changes at this mid-cycle refresh because honestly, this car already looked really good to begin with. So for 2024, they also changed really the, the lineup of TLXs. So again, we're with the A-Spec, but really there's only three trims now. So you can get a TLX with the technology package. Uh, that's right around $45,000, front wheel drive only or you can get the TLX A-Spec for 50 grand and that comes with SH all-wheel drive. We'll talk about that in a second. Or if you're all in and you want more performance, you get the TLX Type S for 57 grand. So tell us down in the comments below. Do you wanna see a TLX Type S on this channel? We're happy to do it. Write down below and let us know your thoughts. So as we continue on with the A-Spec here, this is a new wheel design for 2024. It's the same size that used to be on the car before. So it is a 19 inch wheel, 255, 40R19 tires. Uh, the tires didn't change, the wheel itself did. What they did is they changed the design of the 19 inch wheel. It's kind of this split five spoke design, still in Acura's you know, shark gray paint. It has black lug nuts this time, but I think it looks really good. It's a big improvement and it's really noticeable on this car. As we make a way around the side of it though, they didn't really change anything else. Everything carries over from the way that TLX looked before. And again, that's a good thing because this car looks really, really good. It's really, really long, really, really wide. It just has an awesome stance and proportion, especially out on the road. As we hop off to the rear of the car though, there's actually probably even more changes that you can check out. So with the A-Spec, there's several things that change at this mid-cycle refresh. First and foremost is the spoiler. Now, at first glance, you're gonna go, wait a minute, it looks exactly the same as before, but Acura actually changed the aerodynamics on the car, and we'll get to that here in a second. So in doing so, they changed the sculpted design of this rear deck lid spoiler. It's actually a slightly like lower profile than it was when the car launched. So again, let us know down in the comments below, do you like the old spoiler, which still kind of carries over to TLX Type S in this generation, or are you liking the look of this new design? Outside of that, it's really down low. Those are the changes for A-Spec. So what they did is they redesigned the rear diffuser down low. That's the aerodynamic change they made, which made them change the spoiler up top. But in addition to the rear diffuser, they also changed the exhaust finishers. So previously on A-Spec, it was this kind of rectangular exhaust design. 
That's still true for the TLX technology package if you get that. But here, what they did for 2024 is they went to these large four inch diameter chrome exhaust finishers. And I think for the better, it makes the car look so much more aggressive and so much more sporty. So definitely kudos to the team there. That was a great choice. Obviously, if you step up to Type S, you're gonna get the quad exhaust design, things like that. But for me, this really makes A-Spec look like a true sports sedan now. So let's go ahead and hop inside and talk about some of the interior details. All right, here we are inside the TLX A-Spec. And for 2024, you have three different interior color combinations. So this is the ebony, the black interior. Uh, you can get red uh, in this, especially on the specific exterior color. Uh, and then if you get the apex blue, uh, you can now get orchid, even in A-Spec, that kind of off-white color. So that's a really nice touch. They added this entire red and black contrast stitching to the door panels, and that's both front and rear, so they didn't, didn't cheap out, right? So they have that all over the doors now. Um, there's this extra uh, red contrast stitching that's on the lower part of the dash. Previously it was on top, so they're just adding it down here. But all of that just extra little stitching and touch points, like, okay, you know, it feels a little bit fresh, looks a little bit nice. Um, but really, and this is true for all TLXs, right? So even the, the technology package, the biggest change for 2024 is the infotainment and screen. So now, right in front of you, you got this 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. Uh, and again, you Acura files might go, oh, well they just took it out of the MDX. It is very close, um, the graphics, the icons, but it is updated even from what was in the MDX. Um, there's some new uh, kind of ADAS graphics and images that pop up. Again, we'll talk about some of that stuff during the drive, but um, it's nice that they kind of, you know, did do some TLX specific things in there. Of course, you got a little like TLX sitting there in the middle as well. So, uh, so that is obviously specific and new. Uh, also, what's really big change is the center display. So that used to be 10.2 inches. It now grew in size to 12.3 inches as well. So you've got two of those screens right next to each other. Uh, looks really good. Um, also, I can tell that they've changed um, probably the you know the, the processor behind it because it's much faster than it used to be. Um, you're still using what Acura calls the true touchpad interface. So this little you know touchpad down here. It's not a mouse if you've never used it before. Does take some getting used to. Let us know down in the comments below, do you like the true touch pad interface or you're just asking for a touch screen? So let us know your thoughts down below. Um, but admittedly, the system is uh, much better for this year. Um, the, the resolution is higher. Uh, obviously, it's a bigger screen. Um, even the, the rear backup camera is a much higher resolution than what used to be on the car. So that's a very nice improvement. Um, in addition to that, you now also get wireless CarPlay and Android Auto before you had to pull out your cable. Um, also, you get this uh, wireless charge pad, um, which is really nice. So um, there's some good, like I said, connectivity and updates to this car uh, that, that it really needed. Um, now, one thing, and again, it's not going to show up in the video here. Um, what carries over is the 27 colors that you can change at night. All the ambient lighting is like here in the center. It's on the doors and stuff. So it looks really premium and it's cool that you can change it. But for you owners out there, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. One cool thing that they did is here in the center display is now there's this like shortcut to get to the lighting where you can easily change it, customize it. Uh, before you kind of had to go through menu after menu and layer after layer to get to it. So it's a nice, just thoughtful touch point that they did to add that to the front screen. So I think you guys will definitely appreciate that. Other than that, again, a lot of the same uh, content and features as before. You know, you got this awesome flat bottom steering wheel, perforated leather, contrast stitching, says A-spec down here. Uh, paddle shifters are nice as well. Uh, you know, again, for me, you, as you're hearing all our videos, I love music, I love audio. So uh, the A-spec continues to have the ELS Studio 3D audio system. There's 17 speakers in this car, including right above your head. So sounds fantastic again one of the better audio systems just out there period it really is really good so uh that alone uh you know really enjoy driving this car with my tunes so uh but other than that not a lot of other change points uh again let's maybe just hop in back you can see what the uh the space and what that's like back there and uh let's check it out now all right here we are in the back seat of the tlx and anyone that's been in this car or knows about it knows that the back is a little tight 
Um, I am sitting behind my own driver position. That's how I would be sitting right there though. So uh, based on that, I have a little bit of knee room and leg room. Uh, the hip point's not too bad either. Headroom is okay, but again, I'm about 5'10", so if you're like six feet or more, it is going to be a little tight, uh, definitely. Uh, but again, like I said, some of those premium touch points carried over all the extra contrast stitching in the back. You got the uh, you know aluminum metal speaker grills. Those are really nice. Um, also, what they have updated is you have two USB-C charging ports back here, as well as your own vents. You can basically change the fan and open it up for more air. You still have to have everything controlled up front. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's a premium place to be. Um, it is a five passenger technically. There is a fold down uh, center armrest. In this case, I actually have a child seat in back. And that was again, well, one, because I just wanted to show you how much space there is. And again, you can see that even in this case, the passenger is actually pushed up a little bit closer than even the driver is. So again, it is a, uh, it's more of a, a big GT car than a full family car. But again, let us know down in the comments below. Uh, is this too tight for you? Will this work for you? Uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, so with that, we're gonna hop out, check the cargo space, and then talk about the powertrain. All right, guys, let's go ahead and pop the trunk so you can see how much cargo space you got behind there. Uh, Acura has a really nice key fob. It's actually updated for 2024, so you got the new Acura style key fob. And a nice little feature we maybe didn't cover is the fact that A-Spec also gets the engine starter on the key fob as well. So that's a nice touch. But just like the previous uh, you know, refresh here, um, it's really nice with TLX because either from a push of a button that's actually here in the tail lights, it's actually kind of, you have to kind of look for the button, but uh, that will pop the trunk. Obviously there's a release inside, but with uh, a push of the button on the remote, you can get it to open up all the way. It's like a spring loaded design. So you can see that here. So pretty nice. It's not power, it's just a spring that pops it all the way up. But inside there's really good space. Um, you know, the measurements is roughly like 13 and a half cubic feet. Um, so again, it doesn't have like the same space as something like an Accord, but given the uh, segment, it's actually competitive. So let us know again, is this uh, enough space for you? Or do you have to, you know, move up to like a uh, RDX or some other kind of, you know, midsize uh, CUV. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain. All right, here we are with the engine of the TLX A spec. So if you guys don't know the specs, they didn't change for this mid-cycle refresh. So it's the same two liter turbocharged four cylinder, makes 272 horsepower, 280 foot pounds of torque, and it's made it exclusively to a 10 speed transmission. Now, as I mentioned earlier with the A spec for this year, you can only get the all wheel drive version. So SH, Super handling all wheel drive is the only way the drivetrain comes and for the better because it's one of the best torque vectoring all wheel drive systems in the business. And we'll talk about that here in a second when we go for a drive. But really, again, this is a really good powertrain, good performance. You know, fuel economy is pretty good, all things considered. But again, let us know down in the comments below. Are you stepping up to the big V6 turbo and the Type S? Do you want the extra performance? Let us know down below. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and take this thing for a drive. All right, here we are inside the 2024 TLX A-Spec. Uh, and it's really nice. The, uh, the new digital instrument cluster, you know, we talked about that stuff in the interior. When you go ahead and start the car up, it looks awesome. It shows these really cool graphics of like, you know, the Acura logo, it's just flashing, the meters come up. So some really good uh, things there. So even after I push the start button, then the gauges kind of like come to life and like you see them start up there. So again, I think that's really, really nice. A big improvement over the uh, previous uh, mid-cycle refresh here. So uh, with that, we're just gonna jump right into it and go ahead and take this thing for a drive. Um, there's uh, some pretty good roads here, um, but let's let's just see how it does, right? I mean, it, again, we're, we're, we're gonna look at this like at the A-spec, right? Not as a, as a type S, we'll save that for a different video. So um, just drive it like a, uh, you know, normal, uh, you know, sports sedan here. So uh, TLX is, uh, you know, again, the, the powertrain and things like that didn't change, didn't um, get updated for the mid-cycle refresh. Um, so it has the same powertrain, we've covered that. Um, but even the same drive modes and stuff, um, but they're, they're great. So you've got comfort mode, uh, which is what we're in right now. So as we kind of get out of this uh, parking lot, we'll uh, stay in comfort mode. 
Um, but in comfort mode, the, the steering is, is, is pretty light actually, um, but good to a, but to a good effect, right? Especially as you're like, you know, doing exactly what I'm doing now, navigating through a parking lot. Um, also the, uh, the throttles dialed back a little bit. Um, the, the active sound controls dialed back again, this is a pretty good setting just for kind of, you know, tooling around in town. So, um, one thing though, is like in the digital instrument cluster, you know, you've kind of got these blue rings, uh, for the, where the gauges should be, but you actually lose the, the numbers for like the speedo and the RPM. So let us know if that's okay with you. Uh, it takes some getting used to for sure. So, um, but it's just part of this kind of gauge design for the comfort mode setting. So um, if I switch, you got the dynamic mode here in the center, you kind of turn that left or right. Uh, if I turn it to right in normal mode, um, you do get um, some good graphics in the center display. Um, it looks like it actually, again, a much higher resolution than what was in the car before. Again, this is now the new 12.3 inch um, display. But also when you switch to normal mode, you'll see the gauges change and now they look really good. You got all the numbers, uh, the colors, the red line, and kind of as you're like building RPMs, you see this kind of red trail follow the needle. So that's a really, really nice touch. Uh, like I said, I think this really brings TLX into you know, where it needs to be, right, to compete in this segment because it has these really premium touch points now. So um, with normal mode, again, the steering gets a little bit heavier. Uh, throttle response um, definitely changes as well. Um, again, this car is, was great to begin with, right? The double wishbone suspension, the chassis, the feel. Uh, this truly is a sports sedan. It's, it's definitely a driver's car, and, you know, that obviously didn't have to change or wasn't updated for this mid-cycle refresh. Um, again, one other great thing is um, I'll go ahead and uh, change the sport mode. And sport mode, again, it's it's not overbearing. I think um, a lot of times what can happen is, you know, automakers try to create a sport mode or something like that, and they make everything way too harsh. They make the, uh, the steering way too heavy, the suspension harsh, uh, engine settings and everything. So, uh, yeah, it just really, um, you know, makes it a lot more aggressive than it needs to be, but that's not the case with uh, the TLX. In fact, this sport uh, mode is a lot of fun to drive in because it gives you just the right amount of power. Uh, the steering gets a little bit heavier, but even on this like sport mode, even in like the heaviest like um, setting, it's definitely not overbearing. It's actually um, really good. And so here I'll get into it a little bit. Um, and you can even like hear it in the, uh, in the engine sound, you get a lot of that um, active sound control, but it's not overbearing. You know, let us know down in the comments below. Do you even like that? Do you hate that? I know some people are completely against it, but for me, no, I like a little bit more extra sound and, and excitement, and so I think that helps. Um, the sport mode again, though, man, you can what you can definitely notice there's um, there's actually um, no adjustable suspension on this particular trim, um, but what it changes is the characteristics of the super handling all-wheel drive. So. It's one of the best torque vectoring systems in the business, guys. So basically the diff can send 70% of the power to the rear and then up to 100% of the power to either left or right rear wheel. So it's always looking to, to give you the best and maximum traction uh, possible, but it also lets you have a little fun too. I, I know you may not believe this, right? Given that this is a you know front wheel drive based sedan, but you can actually get like oversteer in this car. And it's, it's really interesting. Like, like if you're doing a really hard turn and you can like mat the throttle, the back end will actually like rotate out. I trust me, if you've never driven a TLX, it's awesome. It's one of the you know fun characteristics about the car, right? Really leveraging that torque vectoring all wheel drive. Um, obviously that ramps up on Type S, and yeah, we can talk about that in a future video, but even for the A-Spec, it doesn't, and it definitely feels good. Um, one other thing that you can do while you're driving is, you know, they have this, Acura has this push button style shifter here. Um, with the D, there's a D slash S, so it just basically means putting the car into drive or putting it in the sport. So if you push it again, you'll see the S come up in the digital instrument cluster. Um, RPMs immediately shoot up. Again, this is just kind of like the most aggressive uh, setting for the transmission. And one nice thing about it is it also basically will hold the gears for you where, you know, if you're in drive, eventually it'll kind of like revert back to like an automatic drive mode. But when you're in sport and you change into the, you know, paddles, it actually will keep the gears for you. So that's really nice. We'll get into it here. So check it out. 
yeah, I mean, this car is pretty quick. It's, again, Type S is really where all the performance is, but again, given that this is just kind of a, 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 a sports sedan at heart, uh, it's got plenty of power, and the tuning that they've done for the, um, you know, paddle shifters, I mean, it's really good. I just did a quick double click and got two quick downshifts, so that to me is really, really good. Uh, again, like even right now, I'm coming up to a stop, and so now, because I have the S push, I have the S button push, plus I pulled the pa paddle shifter, it now says SM1. So I'm essentially, you know, launching in first gear. Um, so that's kind of a trick too, like, cause a lot of times what the car will do without maybe even noticing is the car might actually even launch in like second gear, right? So um, the fact that you can, again, kind of force the gears in sport mode, push the S button, uh, that again, and then right now it's, it's just staying at third gear cause that's what I had last selected. So um, yeah, this car again, like, like I said, it was a really good car. Uh, when it launched a couple years ago, uh, they didn't really make a lot of you know changes, like I said, to the powertrain or drivetrain, but I don't know if they really needed to. I mean, let us know down in the comment below. I'm sure there's always going to be someone that says, hey, you need more power, you need to do this and that. But I mean, given again, given what this car is, um, I think it's really good. It's a, it's a really good blend of kind of like daily driving performance. And also, you know, again, if you put it in sport and you really get after it, like you could have some fun with this car. Now, Again, driving it on like a canyon road or something like that. Again, power-wise, it's going to be there, and you can definitely have some fun. But again, this car is really big. It's really big and wide. It's almost six feet wide, guys. So, um, so again, you know, if you're on the canyon, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful. Um, that's where maybe where you start looking at something like an Integra. So again, let us know your comments down below. Are you going Integra? Are you going TLX? If you're going TLX, are you going all the way up to Type S or not? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Again, also let us know if we should review that TLX Type S on the channel. Happy to do so. Thanks for watching. And we'll go ahead and uh, wrap this up. All right, guys, what did you think of the 2024 Acura TLX A-Spec? Is that exactly the type of sports sedan you're looking for? Uh, are you looking for even more performance? Are you willing to step up to Type S? Obviously, it's more money, as we talked about. But let us know down in the comments below if this is the right fit for you. And again, if you're new to the channel, thanks for joining. Please be sure to click that bell to subscribe to come back for more. And we'll see you at the next episode.